Hello and welcome. If you've never been here before, my name is Jane and I live here in Brittany in northwest France with my husband Mike. We're British and we're semi-retired. We live a thrifty and frugal money-saving life and we share each week our lives here in Brittany. Take a look to see what this week's vlog is all about. somebody wants to get on camera. This week is a great collaboration with one of my favourite new up and coming frugal vloggers. So this week I've joined in with Jane from Shoestring Jane, super blog and the link is below. We set each other a challenge to take something that we've been meaning to upcycle but didn't get round to it and upcycling it. So this week is all about my thrifty and frugal upcycle project. So here is our recycling project. We wanted to make a window seat in our kitchen but when we priced it, it was just too expensive to buy the wood. So we looked out for a bench that we could do something with. So down here to the bench. Now it looks fancier than it is. It's, it's not solid wood, it's not heavy, it's not old, it's just a modern repro. Let me pull this open. You can see inside it's just melamine, it's nothing fancy. So this is our upcycling project. We bought it from a house clearance, it cost 20 euros, it's about 18 pounds. Um, it's nothing at all really, way less than buying the wood. So let's see what we do with it. Well, this is definitely giving away what we are doing with our kitchen bench. As you can see, it's being modelled here by the gorgeous Dolly Knockers. Mary Poppet has... Oh, Mary Poppet, would you get in your bed? Get in your bed, Mary Poppet. See if we can see what you think of it. And so there we have, we have Dolly Knockers and Mary Poppet. Mary Poppet does not want to stay in it anyway. Our kitchen bench is going to double up its two things, a window seat and the dog's beds because both my Bichons like to get into something. So that's where we are going with this. We are making a window seat with combination of dog beds. Right, let's go through the next part of my upcycle. We've taken the doors off. We are just about to sand the bench unit itself, but I'm going to go through what I'm going to use to make the seat pad and the cushions for inside. So, inside, I am just using some old pillows that my dog now wants to sit on, and I'll make covers to go on those. And here, I'm sorry dog, I have to move you. Sorry darling. Here, let's put that there. My mum gave me these a few years ago. These are seat pads to go on a garden bench. I don't have a garden bench and nor will I probably ever have a garden bench, but I am going to use the foam. So I'll take the foam out, I will cut it to fit, and I will make a new seat pad for the top of this. And as you can see, my dog is already very keen on having this garden, this bench upcycled into its fanciest doghouse in the world. So let's have a look at the next step. I'm going to talk to you about fabric now. I don't buy new fabric. I get fabric from a big resourcery. A resourcery in France is where people take their items to the tip 
or the recycling centre called the Dechetterie. It is then placed somewhere nice and dry and secure like a storage unit and it goes off to local resourceries and it's sold very, very cheaply. So most of my fabric that I've got, for example this one, used to be a tablecloth or a bedspread. Um, this is old curtain material that's been somebody's donated that they didn't use. So I'm going to go through my fabric box and find some fabric that's suitable for making the cushion covers and covering the seat back. I'll back to you with that in a moment. So the next thing we had to do, if you come down to here, we had to use a craft knife. Be very careful with those. I'm not giving anyone any tutorials on how to use one. We had to use a craft knife to cut the foam to be the exact size of this. We'll then join this with tape because it's going to be inside the cushion and you won't see it anyway. <laughs> I only need to give it a light sand is that I use a chalk based paint so all I'm doing is giving it a light sand so it gives it a key for the paint to stick to In case you want to know what colour I'm using, it's called Wise Old Sage. It's a very pale grey with a hint of green in it, but it's more grey than green, I hope. <laughs> I have now put two coats of paint on it. The good thing about it being 30 degrees out here is it takes about 15 minutes between each coat and I can put another coat of paint on. It's another hot, hot day. Here's another step in my upcycling and making my washest dog house in the world is the fabric that I got from the thrift shop the second hand shop, the resourcery, is obviously an off cut of a linen fabric. So before I can use it, I've given it quite a wash in warm water and a 40 degree wash. And I've done that because it shrinks. And I don't want to make it and then wash it one day and then it shrinks. So I'm pre shrinking it. And in this heat, it's going to be dry in no time at all. I am making a box shaped cushion cover for the cushion pad to go on top. I have put the link below to the YouTube tutorial that I use to make this. However, he makes it with a zip and I've not got time in my short life to put in, in zips or learn how to make zips. Let's not do zips. I'm just making a pocket fold. And I'm going to show you a, a quick trick for this. Um, I'll take this off carefully because I'm lining up my fabric. When I make a pocket fold, I double the fabric. I double the fabric. So. Because there's one thing that I can do wrong, and I can put the wrong side to the right side, the right side to the wrong side, and all those things. I'm not a professional upholsterer. 
and I'll have a go. I'm not afraid to make mistakes and what's the worst can happen? I have to unpick it and start again. So, but there is my hint, so you don't get wrong side to right side, right side to wrong side. Use some fabric that you've got plenty of that you can fold it in half and the wrong side and the right side, like this. Right side, right side, right side, wrong side. You can't go wrong. That way, you can't go wrong. So this fabric here, I got this from the resourcery and it's called Chiffonniers de la Joie. It was a happy cotton pickers and that is the resourcery in Morlaix. And you know, I can buy a huge bag for life of fabric and I go up to the till and they're always a bit apologetic and I go, mm, this euro, you're like as if to say it's 10 euros. And I feel like I should run out the door fast before they realise that I've actually got in that bag hundreds of euros worth of fabric. So that's where I get my fabric from. Off cuts, resourcery, maybe it's, I don't know, house clearance, people have had fabric hanging around, they haven't used it, it gets donated. But that's where I get it from. There's my tip, double your fabric, then you've never got right side, wrong side, anything like that. It's all the right side. This face here is my smug face. Because I've never made a box cushion before. But, uh, but I have. Now, I'm a great believer in having a go. It's not perfect. But like quilts and things that I make, they're not perfect. But I've, I have a go. And that's what I've done here. So down here, you can see, I have my box cushion cover on my square piece of foam and it's not perfect it is a bit loose it is a bit loose but it's linen and when, every time it when I wash it again it is likely to shrink I didn't put a zip in the back I'm going to show you what I did Let's flip this over and this is definitely the imperfect side because you can see probably could do with taking the seam in a bit here I made an envelope that's all I did and I doubled the fabric over so I couldn't muddle up right side, wrong side, all the sides. So there we are. That is my top. I will make some securings for this to secure it in place so it doesn't fall off. Well, I'm quite pleased with that. So that's another stage of my up cycle of my bench seat. It's got a cushion on top now. Now the next thing I will do is I'll make cushions for my little dog's little cosy, cushiony hole things. I've now moved on to making the cushions for the inside of the bench seat where the dogs will have their little cubby holes. I've used two old pillows under here and to work out how to make the pillowcase I just copied a pillowcase. Here are my cushions that are going to go inside. They're actually old pillows, and as you can see, they, they're pillows that have kind of lost their lost their integrity. Really, not very good for sleeping with. And what I use old pillows for is to turn into little dog's cushions for my dog to sleep on. It's a bit of a waste. Cushions and pillows don't last, so I do try to use them. And as you can see here, I have just made a pillowcase. I have just made a pillowcase. And you can see I've made them a bit big. And I've done this purposely exactly the same as the top because this is linen so even though it has been washed and it's going to need a lot of washing because it is my dog's bed it will shrink a little bit every time because it is linen so i'm going to put them in the dog's beds and see what they think of them here is the final finished window seat it's quite comfy. What do you think of it, Mary? Do you like this bed? I think she does. And I think Dolly, in her dog's bed down here, also looks really comfy. So it's a great place to sit in the morning, in the window, with the morning sun and have a cup of coffee. But most of all, 
I think my dogs are absolutely going to love this. Let's have a quick recap of what I bought and how much it cost me really. The linen fabric is off-cut material that I bought from a recycling centre. It probably cost me about a euro because it was in a big bag for life for the fabric which they charged me about 10 euros for. The seat pads, I'm laughing at my funny little puppy. The seat pads were given to me by mum. They were old garden bench seats that she had. The cushions inside are old pillows that have uh, seen better days. The paint that I've used on here is French Chic and it is a chalk based paint but it's meant for outside so it's very durable and the colour is called Old Sage. I bought this paint to paint my staircase, to paint the banisters and the spindles on it. I've used about one tenth of that, so that's cost about two and a half euros to paint that. The bench itself I found on Facebook Marketplace and it was a house from a house clearance and it really didn't cost us very much money at all. It cost us 20 euros for this bench and we bought that instead of making a window seat because one, it upcycles and recycles something that people want to get rid of and secondly it was way cheaper than buying wood I think somebody wants to get on camera <laughs> Thank you to absolutely everybody who's watched that today, right up to the end. And I want to say a really, really special thank you to Jane at the blog Shoestring Jane for joining in with this today. Make sure that you pop over to Shoestring Jane, make sure that you subscribe. She's got a really fun lady who really knows how to make frugal really good fun. So thanks everybody. I really hope that you enjoy it and give it a like. If you're not a subscriber, go on, hit the subscribe bell and you will never miss any of our vlogs ever again. Thank you so much for dropping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.